A mosaic in art is the decoration of a surface with designs made up of closely set, usually variously colored, small pieces of material, such as stone, mineral glass, tile, or shell, to create a unified design. Mosaic pieces are applied onto a surface that has been prepared with an adhesive. The art form dates back to the 3rd century BCE and were found in ancient Greece and Rome. Here at the Villa Felmonte, we have numerous examples of mosaics that were created specifically for this New Mexico home of Wade Phillips and his family. The word mosaic comes from the Greek mosaios, meaning belonging to the muses. The pieces or materials used in a mosaic are known as tesserae. The gaps or spaces between the tesserae are called the interstice. Andamento is an Italian term that describes the movement and flow of the tesserae. The opus, or Latin for work, is the way in which the pieces are cut and placed. Starting in Mesopotamia, in the third millennium, pebble mosaics were made in Tiryns in Mycenaean Greece. Mosaics with patterns and pictures became widespread in classical times, both in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Early Christian basilicas from the 4th century onwards were decorated with wall and ceiling mosaics. Mosaic art flourished in the Byzantine Empire from the 6th to the 15th centuries. We'll learn more about this art form and how it is represented here at Philmont in this edition of Artifact of the Week. In the 19th century, mosaic artists explored using new techniques and materials. More recently, the boundaries of mosaics have expanded even more, including abstract and surreal compositions, in addition to the expansion of different materials. It's an art form that continues to thrive today, evolving with the combination of traditional techniques with modern innovations. Throughout history, there are many famous mosaic artists worldwide. These include Pietro Cavallini, who lived in the Middle Ages in Rome, Antoni Gaudi, a Spanish artist active during the Art Nouveau movement, who used a striking combination of modernism and mixed media in his mosaics, Marc Chagall, a Russian-French artist, who created not only significant works of mosaics, but also in a wide range of other artistic formats. Today, artists such as Elaine M. Goodwin, Sonia King, Isaiah Zagar, and Laurel True are recognized for their creativity in mosaic art. There are three main methods of mosaic construction. The direct method of mosaic construction involves directly applying the individual tesserae onto supporting surface. This method is well suited to surfaces that have a three-dimensional quality, such as vases. The direct method suits small projects that are transportable. A modern version of the direct method, sometimes called double direct, is to work directly onto fiberglass mesh. The mosaic can then be constructed with the design visible on the surface and transported to its final location. Large work can be done in this way, with the mosaics being cut up for shipping and then reassembled for installation. It enables the artist to work in a studio rather than at the site of installation. In the third method, the indirect method, tesserae are applied face down to a backing paper using a water-soluble adhesive. Once the mosaic is completed in the studio, it's transferred in sections to the site and cemented, paper facing outward. Once fixed, the paper is dampened and removed. This method is most useful for extremely large projects. The artist can rework areas, and the cementing of the tesserae to the backing panel can be carried out quickly in one operation, helping ensure that the front surfaces of the mosaic tiles and mosaic pieces are flat and in the same plane on the front, even when using tiles and pieces of differing thicknesses. Mosaic murals, benches, and tabletops are some of the items usually made using the indirect method as it results in a smoother and more even surface. Here at the Villa Filmonte, there are numerous examples of mosaics that are original to the home. Many of the mosaics were the artwork of Hermann Karl Mueller. 
Mueller immigrated to America in 1878 from Germany. He was already a skilled sculptor and experienced tile maker, having been educated at the Industrial Academy and the Preparatory Art School in Nuremberg, Germany, and the Art Academy in Munich. He first settled in Cincinnati, Ohio, and worked as a sculptor. Through his work in Ohio, Mueller became acquainted with the tile movement. He worked at several tile companies in Ohio, including many notable projects in the area. He was recognized for his work in 1898 when he received the John Scott Medal from the Franklin Institute for his innovations in tile work. In 1908, he moved to Trenton, New Jersey and opened the Mueller Mosaic Company, producing artistic tiles and industrial non-decorative tiles. Mueller was a strong supporter of the arts and crafts movement, which promoted a return to handcrafted goods in the wake of the Industrial Revolution and the belief that beautifully made items should be a part of everyday lives. The tiles made at the Mueller Mosaic Company reflected these ideals. Guests to the Villa Filmante can view mosaic tiles created by Herman Mueller in several places. As they walk along the breezeway, at the front entrance to the villa, in several rooms inside, and along the walkways of the courtyard gardens. The square tiles along the walkways portray southwestern animals and people. Among these tiles, there are tiles that acknowledge architect Edward Bueller Delk and the John Long Construction Company. In the trophy room, there's a large mosaic depicting a cowboy riding a bucking horse that features the UU Bar cattle brand used by Wade Phillips. Wade created the UU Bar brand when the W Bar was unavailable. A W Bar. In his diary, he writes, UU stood for unusually useful. The centerpiece of the villa's solarium is a beautiful fountain, believed to be the work of Mueller Mosaic, with similar fountains included in the company's brochure. The fountain includes gold-plated tiles in the diamond designs. Within the fountains are small squash blossom flowers, representing happiness in the home, and cherub motifs, both of which were important to Genevieve Elliott Phillips, the wife of Wade Phillips, and were incorporated throughout the villa. There are two mosaics, which guides here often point out to visitors. The first is the compass on the outside walkway at the front of the villa, and the second is the detailed mosaic of a cowboy and bull at the villa's front entrance. Both feature the words Villa Filmonte, where the name of the home is spelled with two L's. There's some evidence to suggest that the name was first spelled this way and was changed later to how it is now spelled with one L. Blueprints of the home design include the placement of the mosaics that are spelled with two L's, and an early guest book shows two L's in what we believe is Waite's handwriting. We've not been able to determine when or why the change took place, or if the original intention was that Filmonte would be spelled with one L, perhaps to be consistent with the names of other properties owned by Wade Phillips that were spelled with one L, including Philmont Ranch, Villa Philbrook, Phil Tower, and Phil Cade. However, all the mosaics and the art within the Villa Filmonte showcase the superb style the Phillips family had. As a villa guide myself, I've also pointed out that the bull mosaic may have inspired the early film on Scout Ranch bull logo in patches and even the iconic felt bull. Well, that's all the time we have today. Join us next week as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.